Hey everybody, welcome back today. We're still working on our Sony PVM20L5. That is a professional video monitor in the CRT format made by Sony. This particular one was made back in 2002. And up to this point, we've gotten our shell off. And then we were also able to safely disassemble and remove the deflection board from our monitor. But today we're gonna to need to get in here and break it down even further. Um, we're going to go ahead and clean a lot of the other circuit boards as well as this board, the neck board. We're going to clean the back of the tube up. And then I've also got a little cleaning kit here that I'll show you. This is very cheap from Amazon, but it's just got some ESD brushes, which are safe to work on a PCB like this. In the past, you've seen me use, you know, just some non-conductive uh, paint brushes before, but that was on older monitors that had older circuit boards. These are double-sided boards with smaller components. So there's a little bit more risk of some kind of static electricity damaging something on these boards. So just to be safe, I, I will be using this kit today. And so now let's just go ahead. We're going to take and pull our cameras in real close and we'll start tearing this thing down and get going with our cleaning process. All right, we're going to work our way from this side over, meaning the next piece I'm going to remove is just this bracket, this plastic bracket. There's a daughter board to the D board on the back side. So I'll leave this one connector from that board to this board. And then the other cords will actually just come right on out of these holders here on the side. This is just some cable management. Just try to make sure that you remember where these cables go and where they came from. And uh, that way you could put it back together easily. Uh, otherwise, you'll confuse yourself if you don't at least take some pictures of what the setup is in here beforehand. And that way, if, when you're putting it back together, you can double check with your original photos and see that you've done the right disassembly and reassembly, for, especially for a lot of these cables. And it should just fit in one spot only on the boards, but just to be safe. So once we've got... Every cable disconnected should just be a little screw right here on this side. Now this plastic, surprisingly, on this monitor is in great condition. Normally, this could be quite brittle from the heat and environment that these monitors are used to being in. The high heat tends to make these plastic parts just extremely brittle. Now, you want to be careful, too, because you've got an epoxied wedge here behind it. So it's kind of going to work it around just a little bit to work it off of there. So what's happening is the back side of this right here was getting caught on our rubber pad. But that's the line those up so we can get this out of the way. This is our neck board is right here. And if you look right in here where my finger is, there's a plastic holder in here. And this one has snapped. This one, this bracket always falls apart. I, I've never seen it last. Um, so if you get in here and just like that, this plastic pieces are broken, don't worry about it. It's not structurally important monitor will work fine without it but just note that so rather than attempting to unscrew that some more let's see if we can get our neck board off yeah see this this arm on this side's broken also just leaves this one side and I'm sure that if the other two are broken of course it's not broken <laughs> okay so just go ahead and get our screwdriver. So again, we're coming in kind of over the top of this section and then on this ring that's closest to the neck board, we'll just loosen it up. And there it's loose. And what should happen 
So there we go. It's, like I said, it's broken right there. So don't concern yourself if this actually does fall apart. Again, this is very common. It's just a kind of an extra thing they added later on. But don't damage anything past this. That all is important because that's your convergence and other yoke ring adjustments. So just to keep the balance of the tube the same, I'm just going to tighten that right back on there. And now we can get this neck board out of the way. So just disconnect the connections from where the wires are coming in. And the neck board, if you want, and you're not comfortable actually taking the neck board up fully apart, which I don't blame you, it can be tricky. And you can, you know, better to be safe on any of this than actually sorry. So I'll show you in a second that you can just leave what we've got here. This is the rest of our setup. We can leave this like this. And that comes and attaches to our flyback or, you know, this plastic piece can split in half. This part, we can take that and pull that apart in half and then get the neck board off by itself. The problem with that is sometimes, again, when you're dealing with these old plastic pieces, you're putting stress on it. And if it doesn't go back together, you're going to be in some big trouble because that's a pretty difficult part to get. So for this, uh, for this job, we're, I'm actually going to leave that and pull that with the main chassis uh, after we get the rest of this out. That way we don't damage it any. So the next thing we're going to move on to is now that we've got some room, we need to kind of get this input, our, our real input board out of the way down towards the bottom. If you notice, a lot of cables that go into the board itself. So we're going to make sure that, again, we, we know how these cables are set up. That way, when we reassemble our monitor, we'll do it correctly. But these all come from this other side, which is the board that we have not touched over next to this expansion slot right here. That's where all these cables lead over to the expansion bay. So what we can do now is start taking the screws off on this, but we've got a lot of ground connections. And then we should just be able to slip this out of the way. The first screw is attaching our bracket right here. This is attaching our input board to our expansion slot. So let's get that screw out of the way. Now to get this out, it's a little bit different. The bracket has screws down here on the side that need to be removed. There's two black screws. And that should be just about all that's holding this bracket on this side in. So again, we want this one to come. This whole setup right here needs to come out. So we've got our screws out. And I'm just pushing it back because it's, it's hooked into the bottom of the frame just a little bit. And I'll show you those in a second. There's going to be cables attached to this that we're going to have to kind of pull away for a second. Just a bundle there. Let's swing this around. So you can see what I've got here is 
a connection right here that can come loose. That's most likely to our tally light. And then we got a couple other cable bundles. I'm not sure. Sometimes you got to decide whether you're going to take it from the main board or if you're going to just leave the cables here, which I'd prefer to not unplug more than I have to. But I do need to isolate this board a bit and get it out. You gotta be careful and take these connections. Just don't try not to be too forceful. Give it a little wiggle. There's not a crimp on it or anything, but you don't want to pull on it too hard and damage, pull a pin out or something. So take your time. That's kind of interesting. I'm gonna take that. Comes off of there. The very last cable holding our main card here in place. We've got that connection on the back side. So there's all with there and there. And then we've got these on this other daughter board here. And then that's it for that board. So now we've got our other bracket out of the way. You know. And what's actually holding it? So we've got move that. And there's the plug I was talking about. So that's all good. And I know I can get that out of there. There we go. So it's just getting caught. And there's our input board. Yeah, that's just about everything. Leaving us with just our main board. Go ahead and put our neck board, which we left assembled together. Right here, we've got a screw. And I see a screw behind the flyback, which I will not be able to show you, but it is there. It's difficult to see, but maybe with this overhead camera view, you could get a little bit of a glimpse of where I'm actually trying to get into, and that's right down here. And it looks like this screwdriver is not going to be able to get down in there, so I'm going to have to get a different screwdriver to get that actually out of there. And I do have a shorter screwdriver, still a Phillips head screw, but that other screwdriver was just too big, so. Ooh, what a screw. Goodness. Now, I, I need to make sure that I've got all the screws out before I try to yank on this thing, because there probably is one more somewhere. So, I think the best way to tell that, maybe to secure that neck board back for a second, we'll lean this forward and look at the bottom. Is there some posts? Post here, post here, post here, post here, post here, and post there. So that should be all of them. Let's get set up, hopefully, to get this out. And just, there we go. Slide it back a little. Release the cables. Of course we need to release the cables. That should be good. Get that out of there. Oh, Sony. Sony, Sony. Baloney from Mr. Sony. So that's all of that. We've got some connections up here that we need to just get out. Get out. One more, one more. There we go. One more in the middle. Actually, quite a few more in the middle. I need to come loose. Get it. Still got two more over here. Get 
All right, finally, we have finally broken ourselves free. So that's ready to come out. The only thing left is our lovely anode cap here. And I'm going to discharge the anode cap the way that Sony recommends by removing the cap. I'll actually be removing this cap with my hand. Now again, this is the way Sony has to do it. So if you're not comfortable doing it this way, there are other ways. But this way, you definitely will not damage anything if you do it this way. So that's loose. Kind of got to pinch it together against the side and then try to pull it out. It doesn't always work. So I actually used the plastic piece on that to pinch that a little bit together. You see how those could be pinched together? So that, it could have a current in it. That anode cap could. So that's easy to discharge. We just tap that against the frame. Now our tube itself has not been discharged. It could be discharged because there's a bleeder capacitor or resistor, I'm sorry, a bleeder resistor in this. It should help it self-discharge, but it still hasn't. So. We're going to remove this board, and then we'll come back and discharge it. But thankfully, finally, now we can get all of the main boards just out of our way. I actually forgot about one screw. On this ground plate. There we go. Now we should be able to fully get rid of all that and we can get in here and now start cleaning all right yes we're still back here now i'm going to set it up and actually discharge it so i've got my discharge tool it's got a large gauge copper cable that's double insulated and then that is soldered to this alligator clip which i will clip to my metal frame and really any part on the metal frame should be okay. So just make sure you get a good clip on there. Let's try it right there. We have our cable go free. And then what we're going to do is that cable's twisted around the metal end of this flathead screwdriver and then electrical tapes on there. So essentially what it's doing is it's going to short the current. If there's any in this tube, it's going to short it over to the frame. So don't touch the frame. But if it does that, then all that electricity, what happens is it just dissipates in the frame spreads out and then goes away because it's what it does is it's charged in that little spot but once it gets a large area to spread out on like a ground then it'll go away but as i thought it's already discharged so that's mostly what you would see on something like this is nothing not any kind of zap or anything but it's always good to be safe now let's start our cleaning
side we're going to clean the back of the 20L5 tube and the remainder of the frame and everything so I'm going to use a t-shirt that's just cotton and old that I don't wear it's clean so I'll be using that to wipe down a lot of the tube area and anything that needs to be wiped with cloth and then I will be using a bigger soft bristled non-conductive paintbrush to get around here just because it will work much better than the hard plastic brushes that we were using um, on the circuit boards and we don't need to worry about an electrical shock or short or anything or like that so we're going to go ahead now and just start cleaning one thing to note is if you look at the back of the tube there are lines where you'll notice it looks like a dull shade of something is painted there actually is a paint on the back of these tubes so don't wipe that area with any kind of cleaner or anything you want that tube to remain dull and that paint to stay on there but the rest of the area is safe to clean around you'll see me doing that now let's go ahead now and get started So our main chassis is back in. I also have installed the neck board. Now, I know I didn't show you that on camera, so if you need to go back and watch the video at the beginning on disassembling and how to put it back together, you should probably do that. It was just too difficult for me. I had to get my head basically all the way in back here, and so it really would have been no view because there are numerous uh, places to populate these plugs on this board. Now, there's one that's left empty over here. Uh, this one will go to the power input from our video input board. And then, um, so that's what I'm going to do next, is I'm going to get that board installed, and then the two side boards, and then we'll get it in here and get it all put back together. Now, before we go and work on the deflection board, though, I want to reinstall the anode cap. And since we've cleaned off a lot of the original dielectric grease, I just have some more premium dielectric grease here and um, it doesn't need a whole lot just a dab will do ya you kinda just rub that around and that'll give that suction cup a nice spot to bond with and that there's still a lot of grease on the cap inside here so I'm not as worried about it it was more the back of the tube since we cleaned it but that's gonna really help 
eliminate the chance that any dust particles get stuck under here and it can help dampen the noise some from this flyback as it starts to age they can get louder so it's nice to put that grease on there and then I believe it does allow that cap to just not deteriorate as fast as it would be if it was just dry so make sure your bond's good and that you're actually connected right there and then now we can go look at the rest of the PVM alright folks now we've got our monitor reassembled and I did want to tell you that if you do reassemble this there is going to be one connection point on this board up here that is not normally plugged into. I noticed that when I was disassembling, so just so you know, if you have one empty port here, that's fine. The last cable that comes from that input, extra input board over here, it connects to the deflection board, and so do all these cables and ground cables. Here's the fully reassembled PVM. I went ahead and put it back completely together after we cleaned it. And what I want to do is I want to run tests on it to just make sure that it's still working, but I wanted to show you the after and how much shinier and beautiful everything on here looks. Much cleaner than before. We still got to clean the front a bit. as far as the board cleaning and quality checks those are complete there's some of the areas that were extremely dirty before sparkling clean good example back there by the flyback and by this heat sink even the cables cleaned up nicely Let's get ready and we'll run our tests. So after such a rigorous cleaning, it would be wise of us to go in and test things out before we get too much further into any more servicing processes. So again, it's fully reassembled. All the uh, wiring is properly managed within the monitor. And so this would be a great time to run some quick tests just to make sure everything's functioning properly. Now, if we look in the back, I want to show you I've got RGB set up, and actually on this monitor, it switches over to green, blue, red, and then we need our sync plugged in, and then our mono audio, and that's run over here through RGB, SCAR to our Super Nintendo, and so we'll make sure to power the monitor on first, and then we'll worry about the Super Nintendo. So everything sounds good. For an initial power up, power light is on. You heard the initial degaussing coil go. No sync showing up. And I know it's shaky there, but I explained that in the last video about the menu. If it's in 480i, which it is right now, it will look a little bit more jumpy than if it's in 480p. So what we need to do is make sure it's set up to receive sync. So again, press the menu button, press control on here, and then you'll press the menu button, go down. So let's turn it to RGB component. So I'm just pressing RGB component and see it says it's in component mode. So let's hit enter on the right hand side, enter again, and then we'll press down to turn it to RGB mode. Press enter again. And now we'll press menu once, menu twice to back out of that. The next thing we need to do on the left hand side is press EXT sync, which just turns on external sync. So we have RGB component and external sync lit up on this side. So we're ready to feed in our video and see how it looks. Turn on the Super Nintendo. And obviously, like I said, we're going to have to do a lot of geometry adjustment on here 
especially right to left center and sizing but our screen's working tubes looking good and if we just go real quickly here to our team EOS 240p test suite we can look at a couple of patterns this being a good one shows us all our colors now you're not going to see it as great on the screen but we'll get plenty of before and after shots of how this is calibrated and we'll run through some more adjustments and features on this particular monitor and kind of how you get into the service menu a little bit deeper and change things and then there are a couple of things on the inside that you might end up having to adjust um, so I'll briefly explain those in that adjustment section of the next video and show you that if it's necessary but for right now we're going to power this back down and that's going to do it for this long video all right so there you have a thorough teardown of the interior of this crt and then we've gone and cleaned up all the circuit boards very thoroughly that's probably the most thorough cleaning job i've ever done on a circuit board and the brushes seem to perform pretty good for how cheap they were and how little that kit actually costs so if you are looking for a cheap solution to getting a good clean on your circuit boards that's definitely safe and inexpensive at about twelve dollars i would just recommend maybe trying to think about or investing in another method to get safe compressed air onto your boards without just having to use computer duster cans i do have quite a large industrial grade air compressor actually here with a filter on it so it filters out any potential water into that filter uh, because sometimes when you use compressed air you can get moisture in there and you don't want moisture obviously in electronics so those are just some things to think about and that's a reason why there are specific tools uh, for use on electronic circuit boards when you're using compressed air but that's going to pretty much do it for this video uh <laughs> Thanks for hanging out this long and just checking out uh, the unbelievable uh, design on this. Again, it's very cramped and more compressed, and it's attempting to do things on the level that a Sony BVM would do. And so we obviously still have a lot to go over as far as adjustment through service menu adjustments as well as manual adjustments in the back of the monitor. So that'll come in the next video. And we'll also go through some of the other features as far as like buttons controlling this. And we may even remove the anti-glare layer on this one because it does have a small mark on it. And so I need to talk to the owner and see if he wants us to remove that. And I've also got another small upgrade idea for this one that I've talked about before that will actually give it kind of a little extra boost. And uh, we'll talk about that in the next video too and hopefully kind of wrap things up on this if possible but i'm not promising that it won't take at least one maybe two more videos to completely give all the attention that we need to so that you guys can know everything you want to about the sony pvm 20l5 without actually having to go in and read the 200 page manual that sony has on this although i do recommend checking out that manual and i will have a link to that in this description for this video. But hey, thanks again for joining me today. I'll see you guys next time with some more retro content.